Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being a viewer. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. I'll give you the status of the stimulus negotiations right now and whether we are likely to see another stimulus check. On your screen, you'll see a comment from Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana. Now, he actually used to be a Democrat before he became a Republican. So there's an interesting uh, fact for you right there. But Senator Kennedy was actually asked today, uh, is there any chance of a stimulus deal in December during the lame duck session. I'm going to quote Senator Kennedy because I thought his quote was incredible because he suggested that House Speaker Pelosi was drunk. Yeah, I'm going to read out his quote word for word and then you can decide for yourself. He said, it depends on Speaker Pelosi. I was very disappointed in her comments the other day. Just to just so that our viewers and subscribers understand, Speaker Pelosi was standing firm with the need for a larger comprehensive stimulus package. So as far as she's concerned, her position remains the same. So I'll continue, I'll continue quoting Senator Kennedy. I was very disappointed in her comments the other day where she said she's not budging on her proposal. I mean, frankly, I was appalled. Uh, that's a position she needs to go to bed. She's drunk. There's no way that proposal was going to pass the United States Senate before. And it's certainly not going to pass now. And I think it's a real shame that that's her position. If you look at the numbers among small to medium sized American, uh, American businesses right now, between 30 and 40 percent are still losing money. And we still have millions of people unemployed all through no fault of their own. We need to help them, but the bill needs to be targeted. So, by the way, this language was essentially echoed by the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and the president prior to the election had said that he wanted a bigger package, potentially even above $2 trillion. So, just to be clear, right now the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell wants something targeted. He wants something done before the end of the year. He did call it job one of uh, during this lame duck session. Let's see if that happens. And the uh, you know other Republican senators are also saying they want something targeted. So, it looks like House Speaker Pelosi is probably not going to be able to get the $1.9 trillion package that in another world, in another dimension was offered to her by the U.S. Secretary Steven Mnuchin. And again, let's get back to Senator Kennedy's quote. We need to help them. He's referring to the unemployed. But the bill needs to be targeted. And I'm not going to vote for a bill that includes a lot of Pelosi spending or policy porn. I'm not going to do it. And I don't think most Republicans will. Um, keep in mind that the, the Republicans uh, had proposed a $500 billion targeted, a skinny package, if you will. House Speaker Pelosi wanted something in the range of one, in the range of right around $2.2 trillion, I should say, because uh, the $1.9 trillion offer was from the, was from the U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. I wonder what he's doing now. Uh, we haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, by the way, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin loves biking. I don't think U.S. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin is biking right now. Uh, he's probably, um, you know, he's probably doing something else because, you know, he, by the way, if you guys didn't know, U.S. Secretary Steve Mnuchin acts as a film financier and does a whole bunch of other things. So I'm pretty sure he's off doing whatever he's doing right now. But where things stand right now is that we have President-elect Joe Biden wanting stimulus. Uh, we have the Democrats, House Speaker Pelosi wanting stimulus. And we have the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying he wants something a lot more targeted, a lot more specific. So what kind of moves are the players in Washington expected to make? Is the president going to be motivated to, to push for a second stimulus check? We haven't seen much information, much news from the president. In fact, the president hasn't even done public events in the past couple of days. The president and his team seem to be focused on questioning the election. So we haven't heard much from them as far as the second stimulus is concerned. The only thing we've heard from the administration side, specifically from the Republican side, has been, uh, you know, comments from the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying that they needed to do some sort of a targeted stimulus. We've heard the Democrats staying firm with their position. That's all we've heard. So uh, what is likely to happen? Here's a comment on your screen. Here's a quote from Brian Gardner, who's a chief Washington policy analyst at Stifle. Stifle is an investment banking and financial services company that's located in Missouri. And this is what Brian Gardner said. He said, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will likely repropose a plan that he pushed in October, the McConnell plan was for $500 billion and included additional funds for the Paycheck Protection Program. By the way, in another interesting side note, earlier today on CNBC, we had Kevin O'Leary, who's a Shark Tank investor. He said that in his opinion, there should be no, no more Paycheck Protection Programs. There should be unemployment insurance. There should be benefits for the unemployed because, you know, a lot of individuals specifically in travel, leisure, entertainment and hospitality have lost their job through no fault of their own. But Kevin O'Leary actually uh, implied that a lot of businesses should essentially be allowed to go bankrupt. His words, not mine. Don't blame the messenger. 
he said that a lot of businesses should essentially be allowed to go bankrupt uh, if you know if they can't re-engineer themselves for the new economy because he said that consumers habits the way we shop the way we spend what we buy uh, is fundamentally changing so therefore businesses that are unable to adapt should not be given a lifeline should be allowed to go under if they're not able to re-engineer themselves and Kevin O'Leary said there should be no more paycheck protection funds he said that there should be uh, the unemployment insurance extension because individuals need money to be able to pay rent to be able to put food on the table and to be able to keep the lights on I also want to be clear that again this is a k-shaped recovery and individuals at the bottom of the k individuals in travel entertainment leisure and hospitality again travel entertainment leisure and hospitality have been the ones that have been impacted the most although we did see a huge bounce back in a lot of travel stocks some as high as 20 to 30 percent in one day when the when the announcement of the Pfizer vaccine came in yesterday so hopefully those industries can bounce back and Brian also said Brian Gardner again chief Washington policy analyst at Stifle uh, and an investment banking and research company based in Missouri Brian also said Republicans may push for a smaller gear so for a smaller package now given the announcement given the announcement of the Pfizer vaccine that it is more than 90 percent effective in other words they may say hey look the economy is getting back on track let's just let things continue and for all our viewers and subscribers who thought that Republicans would lose control of the Senate because of their their conservative nature when it comes to stimulus guess what they haven't lost control of the Senate in fact the Georgia Senate runoff races if they go the way of the Democrats will give the Democrats just a razor thin majority. So we have 48 seats with Republicans and 48 seats with Democrats. If the Republicans win Alaska and North Carolina, they'll be at 50 seats. Now, what happens to the two Georgia Senate runoff races? If both of them go to the Democrats, we'll have 50 and 50 with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris being the tiebreaker. However, if even one of those seats is lost by the Democrats, the Republicans will now be at 51 and the Democrats will essentially be able to go from only 48 to 49 which would mean that Republicans would essentially have control of the Senate which means that for the foreseeable future we have Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell just unbelievable where things stand right now and that is the current state of the stimulus and I do want to be clear to our viewers and subscribers that economists are indeed pushing for further stimulus here's a comment from Gregory Darko who's the chief US economist at Oxford Economics uh, Gregory said Without faster job growth, unlikely at this stage of the recovery, or increased fiscal aid, meaning more stimulus, households, businesses, and state and local governments will be increasingly susceptible to a deterioration of the health situation. Basically, let's you know, let's understand this. Even though we have a vaccine, it's going to be some time before the vaccine essentially makes its way through the system. And plus, keep in mind that individuals are going to need two doses of the vaccine. A lot of individuals might not even want to take the vaccine. So it's still going to be a few months before the full effect of the vaccine can make its way through the economy before travel leisure entertainment and hospitality can start to make their way back i wish we could just snap our fingers and go back to normal but that's simply not what's going to happen right now and finally if there's one thing that needs to be done it should be the unemployment benefits extension program because the 600 dollars week federal booster was a lifeline for individuals that expired at the end of july after that the republicans simply didn't want to extend it by $600 a week, the Democrats did, and then the president did the lost wages assistance program, but now that has also expired. Here's another comment from Gregory. He said, we estimate the expiry of the LWA, the lost wages assistance program, will create a $600 billion annualized income cliff, leaving household income roughly 3% below its pre-pandemic level in the month of October, with over 20 million individuals still claiming unemployment benefits, such a shortfall could have even deeper local consequences and keep in mind a lot of programs are actually scheduled to expire at the end of the year which is why some sort of legislation some sort of agreement between house speaker pelosi and senate majority leader mitch mcconnell which is then signed into law by the president um, you know before the inauguration of the president-elect joe biden before we get all this election uh, this election integrity stuff sorted out the more immediate need for the american people is passing more stimulus is having an extension of unemployment benefits and that is what is needed right now economists agree but unfortunately we have house speaker pelosi standing firm we have the senate majority leader mitch mcconnell not wanting to do anything more than something that's targeted you heard the comments at the start of our video from senator john kennedy from louisiana who basically said that house speaker pelosi was drunk we don't know the motivation level of the president of the united states donald trump is he motivated to sign something is he motivated to push 
to make something happen because that big 2.2 trillion dollar deal that he wanted, that big 1.9 trillion dollar deal that House Speaker Pelosi wanted, guess what? It ain't happening. That is where things stand right now, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. I really appreciate you watching. If you don't know anything about me, check out my video. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications. That really helps out the YouTube algorithm. I would really, really, really appreciate that. And also please share this video with friends and family. Please let me know what you think in the comments section below. Your comments are very important to me. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. I really appreciate you. We work hard for you and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.